Hello world, this is Konstantinos, and this time I'm going to take a guess that every time you have needed to update the target SDK version or the compile SDK version inside the build gradle file of your Android application, you need to Google their meaning and differences, and even then, it still seems confusing. Also, I'm going to predict that when you find out that a new Android version is out and you learn about the changes it brings to the way apps work, it makes you feel a bit uneasy. You quickly try to figure out whether it can affect or break your existing apps. Well, if I have guessed right, then stay with me in this video so that we can learn and understand what is going on in these cases once and for all. First, let's start with the fundamentals. So, you find out that a new Android version for Android smartphones is publicly available. Remember, we have a major Android release once per year. Should you now worry about how your apps will work in this new Android version? I mean, if you own a Google Pixel, which is historically the device that receives the update the day it becomes available, are you in for unpleasant surprises? Can your apps break or in general not work perfectly on newer versions of Android? Think about that question. This is super important for our peace of mind. If an app can malfunction whenever a phone receives a major update, then this would mean bad news for us developers. But I'm here to give you good news today. Android is forward compatible. Let's see what that actually means. It means that once an app has been tested to work perfectly, for example, on Android 12, at a specific point in time, and then you were to take that exact same application and run it on a device with Android 13, well, that app will also work just fine. So the same applies anytime a new version is out. We should not worry about it at that specific point in time, of course. How does that work? Well, here's where Compile SDK version and Target SDK version both come into play. First, eyes on the Compile SDK version. This is a simple one. This tells Gradle that hey, you can use that version of the Android SDK to compile our app with. It only affects compilation. So you have to first download that SDK in your Android Studio and then change the compile SDK version in the build Gradle file. After you've done that, it means that any new API added in the SDK itself is now available for you during development. The good news is that this does not change the app behavior. Yes, I'm going to repeat that. This does not change the app behavior. It only matters during compilation and simply is not even included in the final APK as information. Of course, since you're now compiling with a different SDK, several things can change during development. New warning or error messages can make your day a bit worse than it was. But to conclude, it's recommended to always keep this value up to date as it can break faster compilation times, it will show you what is deprecated as soon as it becomes so, and also, the added benefit of the new APIs is always a plus. But now, let's move on to the more interesting friend, the target SDK version. I said that compile SDK version is simple, but that does not mean the target SDK version is complicated, but there are some things to keep in mind. First of all, one of the things that one can read about the target SDK version is that Target SDK version is a property that tells the system for which Android version the app was designed and tested on. In my humble opinion, this is one of those things that simply tells you nothing meaningful, actually. What does it mean that it, we tell the system that we tested on the version? Is that a disclaimer? Is that a promise? Do we have consequences of if we lie? And uh, what does the system do with that information? Um, so it tells us nothing about what actually happens behind the scenes. Maybe it's just me and I'm just not good at understanding. So I will try to explain it my way. Target SDK is your safeguard against future versions of Android operating system. Remember what we said about Android being forward compatible? That when you run your app on a newer Android operating system version, it continues working as if you had the previous version installed. This is due to the target SDK version. If you don't change this value, then Android will continue running your app as if it's still running on the OS version that the target SDK version indicates. This is what it does. 
it's the upper limit of your application's OS compatibility. I know, I know. L let's see an example. Let's try the most memorable change that Android has ever introduced. One of the most, at least. Runtime permissions. If you remember, Android development before that, well, you probably had a good childhood. Joking aside, it was SDK number 23. So Google announces that runtime permissions uh, are going to be a thing from SDK 23 and moving forward. But if your app targeted SDK 22, nothing would actually change. Permissions would not be needed at runtime. One question someone can now have is, okay, if I don't like a change or I don't want to bother writing the code to support the new change, can't I just stick to an older target SDK version and be set for life, never having to risk breaking anything? That works. Well, that would be a valid assumption, but Google has a fail safe on their side. There is a non-apparent property that is not defined by our application, but is rather defined by Google. It's minimum target SDK version. Yes, that's a mouthful, but it's self-explanatory. You can't keep the same target SDK version forever as updates to existing apps and of course new apps will no longer be accepted if the target SDK is less than the minimum value. So in a sense, it's a matter of time before you will be forced to comply and move on with your target SDK, thus bringing your app closer to the most recent SDK. Do not worry though. It does take a lot of time before a new SDK becomes mandatory, so hopefully you will have had a lot of time to prepare by the time this minimum target SDK forces you to take action. And that's it. It's pretty simple, yet simple can be confusing if not stated clearly. I hope this video helped you. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.